exactly is soil anyways? cellar top secret yet highly sought after underground layer the bunker the long creeps limited headquarters welcome back so yeah what is soil right if you want to go the textbook example route it's basically all of the loose unconsolidated mineral and organic material um, on the upper layer of the earth's crust that can support life um, now when we talk about that upper layer of the earth's crust we're talking about a very thin veneer <laughs> If we're talking about the earth as this apple, all of the other parts of the earth, the mantle and all of that stuff are the inside of this apple. And this tiny little layer of skin right here is pretty much soil. So how incredible is it then that that thin veneer, that tiny little amount of earth, that beautiful skin around our planet is the, the foundation for life as we know it. Let, let's start at the beginning and, and what does soil mean to us? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? What should it mean to everybody? What it should mean to everybody is that this is a, a very precious natural resource. Soil itself is a living thing. In this much soil, in your backyard right now, as we speak, there are more microbes in here than there are human beings on Earth. Think about that. In about an acre of good soil, there are about 900 pounds of earthworms. There's, there's thousands of pounds of bacteria. There's, there's even more thousands of pounds of fungi. And then all of the other micro, macro arthropods, all those crazy little multi-legged critters, the ones that we can barely see with the naked eye, the ones we cannot see with the naked eye. There are just, it's a universe in here. It is alive. When we're walking on our lawns, we are walking on the backs of all of our willing organic workers. This thing is an ecosystem unto itself if you couple in the the plant, the vegetation that grows out of it, the roots, the leaves, the photosynthesis process, that liquid carbon pathway. There is so much going on in this. This is everything. This is beyond space exploration. We have only begun to scratch the surface on this. The very foundation of life as we know it. Everything that we know, everything that we utilize in our lives comes from this. Our homes are built out of things that grow out of this. Our homes are built on this. Our clothes that we wear are made of, of the stuff that comes from this. It filters water. Food we eat comes from the soil, right? That's kind of an obvious one. It's sort of the top of the list. It's an ecosystem unto itself. Uh, it anchors our ecosystem in that, that sun. It, it, it gets into the leaves of that plant, and that plant kind of turns that energy into biochemical energy. The liquid carbon pathway happens. The bacteria and fungi are called upon by those root exudates from that photosynthesis, and they kind of exchange with the, with the plant the nutrients that it needs. Um, all the while, those microbes are kind of creating the right habitat for that plant to grow healthy. They're creating the structure. They're, they're doing everything that is needed to create that that deep root system and, and for the plant to flourish and then we in turn put that in our bodies and we take up those vitamins and minerals it's a beautiful symphony it's one of the most amazing things in our natural world for my money I might be drawing an inadvertent line in the sand here but I'm just gonna go ahead and say it the solution to climate change lies within our soil I'm talking about carbon sequestration over there 
that's a story for another time. What I'm trying to get at here is soil is a lot of things to a lot of people. Um, the civil engineer needs to know the properties of soil because they're building infrastructure. The geologist needs to know about the formation of soil and how that all kind of works in their studies of, of minerals and rocks in the rock cycle. And then obviously farmers, the agricultural world, they need to know every nuance of that growing medium. And that kind of trickles down to us as the the enthusiast, the heart and soul kind of lawn care enthusiast and, and home gardener. Everything from agriculture sort of trickles down to our gig. And why should this all matter to us as the gardener and the grass geek, right? Why should we care about soil texture, about particle size, uh, the porosity, the soil structure, the formation of our soils, our soil profile, the horizons? What was our original bedrock, our parent material in our area? How many cation exchange sites are in my soil in any given sample? Why is my pH value what it is? What is humus? What are all of those creepy crawlies doing under there? Let's all learn this stuff. We need to understand this from a from a baseline standpoint from the beginning. Have a better understanding of, of really that system that's going on underneath that grass, underneath your flip-flops. When we have a better understanding of that system, of the components of the soil, then we can make better decisions, make more educated decisions in our tending. Um, we can reduce the inputs. We can reduce the operations piece. We can know how this product is working within that system that we that we buy and we, and we put down into our lawns and gardens. We know how the soil is utilizing it. So we become more efficient and practical type of uh, lawn care enthusiasts and gardeners. The stewardship is there. We need to get passionate about this. We need to care about the life that's in that soil. Go beyond the aesthetics. Go beyond the domination piece. We need to we need to think about this because we're just stewards. We're stewards. We're here to leave this thing better than we found it. We're here for just a short period of time. We're not the only creatures within this system. Remember the 900 pounds of earthworms I mentioned before, what they do for us in that soil. When we start chasing away earthworms by our ill-advised decision-making, we are not being stewards, we are not being practical, and we are messing up the system and we get into a vicious circle that we have to just continually utilize these inputs and operations and, and, and the stewardship piece gets thrown out the door. Mother Nature takes the back seat, she's out of the car, we kicked her out of the car and we're driving, hopped up on chemicals. Pardon my unbridled passion there, let me just get back down to earth. It's, it, it's that soil that we need to build and understand and, and, and create the best possible growing medium we can. As, as gardeners, we're on the quest for that beautiful, healthy, loose, humus-rich, kind of loamy soil. Um, and, and that's where we're going at. So let's get back into this thing. What is soil? It's pretty safe to say that soil is kind of the, the result of weathering. Weathering has a large part to play in soil formation. You've got that original parent material. And depending where you are in the world, there's different types of that, that, that parent material. And that kind of makes up the base of your soil type, of your soil order. That original bedrock, that, that, that parent material, breaks down over a very, very long period of time, as well as organic decomposition. Um, happening. So, you know, you've got the combination of our geological world and our biological world kind of, you know, together combined to create that, that membrane around earth called soil, that beautiful soil, right? If you want to step back from that a minute and really put your science geek cap on, Soil is at a constant interface between four spheres. You ready? You've got the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, and the biosphere. That was almost poetry right there. But you have got all four of these spheres kind of overlapped and connected. And right in the middle of all of that overlapping lies soil. In that interface zone, you know that you are going to have a very diverse, abundant, and rich kind of life going on. And that's soil. Pretty amazing stuff. So let's kind of talk about these, these aspects. All right, graph time. Here we go. But before I do this, just know that these percentages are never really hard numbers. They can fluctuate via certain weather events, what your soil type is. There's some factors there. That being said, in a typical soil sample, in your yard, in your town, in your county, in your state, um, it is going to be comprised of this. And this is not a soil test, nor is it a soil texture 
exercise, but this is just how a typical soil sample breaks uh, down in your, in your area. So 45% of that soil sample is going to go ahead and be mineral, okay? That is the solid phase of soil. That is that lithosphere, that parent material. 25% is water. There's your hydrosphere. 25% is air. There's your atmosphere. Because 50% of soil is actually pore space and voids. And then you've got 5% organic matter. So there, obviously, is your biosphere. And we'll touch on all of these. Listen, man, I'm going to cap this one right here. Because I don't want these to be real long, concise, yet informative and fun. Each aspect of soil, we are going to dedicate its own, you know, seven-minute video to. It's going to be multi-part. Hopefully you come away from all of this just somewhat entertained, but definitely learn a little thing or two and mainly give you a love and a respect for this because this isn't dirt. Right now, this is dirt because this is displaced soil. I took this soil from my backyard, my Park Avenue biome back there, and I brought it down here on top of this Archie comic. All right, that's an Archie comic I put it on, and now it's dirt. I'm going to give you a respect if for soil. Call it soil. Love it. Learn it. You know, you'll become a better gardener and a better grass geek. And maybe you'll start eating this stuff for breakfast like I do. Dirt made my lunch. Dirt made my lunch. Thank you, dirt. Thanks a bunch for my salad, my sandwich, my milk, and my lunch.